all change is bad, change is good. And that's what got us here tonight. And right now, I want to welcome up the brand new core team of the Rendezvous that has got us here through this amazing year. Give it up for Zachary Freeman, Amber, Holly, Joe, and Nelson. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for them right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> this is quite the fun night. How are you ladies and gentlemen doing dressed to the nines? I'm feeling good. Zach, how are you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful tonight. You haven't bopped once tonight. That's kind of what I was, ah, I got my fingers crossed. Uh, His pants are too tight. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Roshane, stop jocking my style. <laughs> Joe, you just put on socks. <laughs> Didn't have them on earlier, I saw. <laughs> We're up here tonight. We're going to have a little bit of an interview with the core team. Can we give it up with the core team? <laughs> I'm going to ask you a few questions. And you know, I want you to give your honest, most heartfelt answers to the questions. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I gotta take this off. My head itch, man. Like, look, I can't. I, I can't. I, I can't. That's the lemon drink right there. This is lemon drink. Lemonade, lemon drink. I can't do that all night, Joe, man. Why you made me do that, man? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't take myself serious. All right. No, seriously, man. We're we're here to look. <laughs> Hey, don't y'all love Pastor Terrence? Can you put your hands together? Is there anything he can't do is the new question. I didn't quite picture ministry being like this. I promise you. It's a strange, strange. Um, we, we've had a lot of fun, man. This has, been, this has been a different year in the rendezvous, but it's been an exciting year. Like I said, change is, is really awesome. And we just wanted to take a little moment tonight to talk about some of the amazing wins that we've had this year, man. I'm always about moving forward, but truth be told, you got to look back and celebrate sometimes. And that's what we're doing um, tonight. I, I just want to throw this kind of question out there, general, for all you guys. What's, what was maybe one of your favorite moments of the rendezvous in this past year? And anybody can answer. Nelly, what's your favorite moment? Come on, Nelly. Uh, my favorite moment. Talk to him. Hey. Uh, my favorite moment was the blackout for Men in Black series when all the lights went out when Pastor Riz Jr. was preaching. And, um, that was like 150 years ago, but that's okay. I'll yeah, accept that answer. All the lights in the sanctuary went dead, and mm -hmm. um, they got him a bullhorn, and they got him a, a big flashlight. I don't even know what they called. But uh, he was preaching harder than ever when... Um, when that happened, and I hope, and those whole altars were like filled up, and um, I was sitting in the um, overflow, and that was kind of like one of my first times coming, and I didn't know what was going on, or things were getting really weird, you know what I mean? But that was that was my best moment. <laughs> when do they not get weird here? My goodness gracious, Holly. Um, one of my favorite moments, this is kind of funny, uh, we were up here, I don't remember what series it was, but we had three couples up here and we were playing a, a, a relationship game. Yeah. And I think Joe and I were one of the um, couples that were married and we lost. So I just thought that was really funny. I'm like, oh, great, guys. I swear we really know each other. Yeah. I swear we have a really healthy relationship. Yeah. But, you know, it was a vulnerable moment for us. You know, we really just, all of our cars were out there. It was just like, you know, hey, this is where we're at. That was my favorite moment. You, you guys have been through, like, a lot of counseling since, right? Like, it was. Yeah, yeah. clearly she's not gotten past that. Like, <laughs> I'm still upset. Thought you knew each other. But anyway, um. My favorite, probably my favorite night so far of this new new season that we're in was the 80s night that we had. Yeah. That was probably, I think, the, one of the funniest, most collective action that we've had in, in a long time. And so yeah. that was probably my favorite. That was a very random night, by the way. We saw so Bill and Ted. Y'all remember Bill and Ted? So Bill and Ted, are y'all are y'all here tonight? Stand up. Let, let the people say. T.C. Smooth. T.C. Smooth and Kat M. That was awesome, man. You guys, they never left. That time machine was terrible. Okay. <laughs> Amber, what you got? 
Um, so mine's not an actual night, but a few months ago you saw in that video the This Is Us photo shoot that happened. And that was just such an amazing time to see a lot of our leaders come together and really grow together and bond together. So that's definitely been one of my favorite moments leading up to today. What about you, Pastor? Oh, man, I, I think there's been some pretty incredible moments and I think um, on a more like maybe spiritual or serious moment I, I know a couple weeks ago or maybe months at this point when there's right in the middle of just a, a ton of shootings happening in Dallas and Louisiana and Minnesota and, and uh, we just had a really you know transparent authentic moment um, where I think a lot of people were grieving and processing or trying to and you know I, I, we, we have a lot of fun here and I, I think what I want people to understand is that um, we have a lot of fun because we want to draw people in and we want to uh, celebrate because I think God is, is a God that throws parties you see that throughout scripture but God also is uh, Jesus is also a God that says come to me all you who are broken and weary and uh, that was just a special moment where we were able to open up the altars and uh, Joel and the team just were able to lead as, as really the spirit led and it, it really at one point the whole entire stage was on their knees the whole audience was on their knees and it was just a really um, I think important moment that we realize that um, the house of God is a place it says my house will be a house of prayer and um, I think that's something that marks Trinity Church and uh, the rendezvous as a ministry of Trinity Church really has that in its DNA and so I thought that was such a special night where you got to to grieve and pray and then by the end of it it was so powerful I feel like everyone was smiling everyone had more joy and hope than than they walked in with and so I think that's our goal every Tuesday night is that no matter what people walk in with they walk out feeling full of hope knowing that the best is always yet to come so that was one of my favorite moments it's amazing absolutely I, I think for me, I would, I would probably actually say our last birthday was cool because it was such a pivotal moment in the VU. Like we, we were in a space where we, there was a lot of unknown ahead, but the beautiful thing is I love the way that there was a passing of the guard. I feel like everything was done the right way, but I got excited because I remember when I was the 25 year old guy yeah. and somebody passed it to me. And it felt really cool to be able to kind of stand in the background and pass it to the next generation. And I think what's really awesome is that since that day, there's so many new faces and new leaders in this house. Like, and I could have never imagined it, but it's really awesome to see people grab the torch and run with it. So if I could say anything, I just want to give kudos to our pastors here, Pastors Holly and Pastor Joe, man, because they've been running. Ministry is not easy. There's a lot of random things. There's a lot of crazy things that happen. There's a lot of sleepless nights. There's a lot of tragedy. There's a lot of trial. But man, you know that it's right no matter what when you stick with it. You got to have some grit, some intestinal fortitude. And these two have shown that each and every day. And we're all still here because of it. So man, I, for me, that changing of the guard was awesome because it was just like you could I, it was watching God empower the next generation of leaders. So for me, as, as the old guy on the stage, I can't even believe that I'm saying that now. It's awesome to look out and see all these crystals laughing at me. <laughs> but it's awesome to look out and see the next generation. I'm so excited about what you guys are going to do. Now, I ain't stopping like I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm gonna still wear wigs and act crazy. But I'm just saying it's really awesome uh, to, to just anticipate what God's going to do through you. Amen? Amen. Um, so with that being said, with, with change, a lot of new things have come about. And one of the uh, things that I was really excited about that you guys uh, instituted was meetups. Yeah. Yeah. Meetups have been awesome. And Amber, why don't, you, why don't you give us some of the wins of meetups this year? Yeah. yeah, so we started meetups back in January, correct? January was when we launched? I think it was January when we launched, and we launched with two on Monday and Thursday, and in the newest season, we launched three. So we launched one on Monday and two on Thursdays, and um, Alfredo and I get to the opportunity to lead one of the ones on Thursday, but just being able to um, interact with some of the other meetup leaders, Ludi and Nelson and Hannah and Kilton, and just seeing the lives that have changed through meetups. You know, it's not just a time where we come and hang out and laugh, even though we do have a lot of fun. It's also a time to grow together. Yeah. 
just as people as um, people in Christ and something that we've noticed in our meetups is that people are just looking for genuine relationship with each other and looking for friendships that are really going to help them encourage them encourage them to continue their walk in Christ and so being able to see all these people have come together people have come to these meetups that have never even been to the church they just saw it on social media their friend invited them and now they're plugged in in the church I see some faces out here that got plugged in and now they're some of our most faithful servant leaders and so meetups has just been so life-changing it's not just a, a fun time but it really is a time for us to come together to grow together outside of the four walls of these church um, and meet and be in a little bit more of an intimate setting and really get to know one another it's awesome it's awesome it's the heart of what we do man we meet whether it's in this building, whether it's in our homes, whether it's in a cafe, we continue to meet together. And when we continue to do things like that, it makes a real big church feel like a small church because we have connection and we have accountability with each other. Amen. Uh, another ministry that was actually birthed at the VU, but man, I've seen it grow in leaps and bounds this year. is M28. Any M28 folks out there? Man, Nelson, man, why, why don't you tell us some of the big wins that you've had this year with M28, bro? Man, I could talk about talk that all to night. Um, Fourth quarter. I say between last year and this year, we don't. Uh, it's, it's a group of people that come from Trinity Church, Young Adults, and other um, churches that we meet here, and we go to Overtown downtown, and we just feed people who who are in the streets, not just homeless people, but it can go from prostitutes to children that be in the streets, and we. We've fed at least, actually more than 5,000 people between last year and this year. Uh, we went to... Yeah, talk, talk to them. Yeah. Say it again, because I don't think they heard you. How, how, how well, many we, people? We've reached over 5,000 people from last year wow. to this year. And um, last Christmas, we went to the Poke Bean Projects. Close to 200 of us went out to the Poke Bean Projects. We passed out gifts. Uh, People from Trinity Church, young adults from Trinity, they contributed. You know what I'm saying? We all came together and we just made it happen. We just spread love throughout the hoods of Miami. So I'm excited. We couldn't have done it without you guys. You know what I'm saying? And um, you never know who's in here when you meet them outside of the walls. And they get to inspire and change the world and flip the world upside down. And I'm just encouraged when I, when I get to do life with people like that. And it um, makes me go harder, makes me go stronger for God. That's great. That's great. Now, real quick, cause I, and I should actually, I'm going to come back to you too, Amber. When does M28 go out? Because, man, you tell people about this awesome ministry. They probably want to be a part of it, man. Tell them when you go out. We go once a month. We meet on Fridays afternoon. Um, we have another one on 24. We have in a march from downtown to Wynwood, and we're doing that in, in honor of my good friend Pete. And um, we're having a big march, and we're going we're gonna to take over, man. It's going down. The 24th of September, that's on a Saturday. We're meeting at 4 o'clock. We're meeting here, and then we'll head down to the field over town. So good. Absolutely, so man. Good. Link up. If you, if you see Nell after church, link up with him. Be a, don't, don't just be one of the people that comes to church and doesn't uh, become a part of the things that are happening. Like, like a lot of people leave church because they feel like they can't be a part of it. Yeah. There's so many things going on that people are just choosing not to be a part of. Yeah. Attach yourself to vision. Attach yourself to mission. That's what's going to sustain you and keep you involved. A good sermon, man, that may hold you for a little bit, but when you attach yourself to mission, that's what's going to sustain you in God's house. He's still here, and he has people attached that won't leave this place because they have linked on to the vision, and they are part of the mission. Don't just see the church. Be the church. That's what this place is all about. Amen? And Amber, once again, with that whole theme of being the church, when can they link up for, uh, for meetups? Yeah. So we are on an off week this week, so meetups will not meet this week, but we will have our final meeting for season two next week on Monday at 8 p.m. at Buffalo Wild Wings and Thursday at 8 p.m. at Aroma Espresso Cafe and, um, I'm sorry, Burger Fi. And then we'll take two weeks off and then we'll launch season three with two on Monday and three on Thursday. So be looking out for information on that. I really encourage you, get a part of a meetup. Man, don't complain about you ain't got no friends. Don't complain about you can't find a godly man or a godly woman. Go, go, go somewhere where they're hanging out at. <laughs> 
They'll pop up, just saying. Sorry. I should put on the wig because I'll be nicer with the wig. No, I won't do that. <laughs> um, an, another another uh, ministry, and what, what I would honestly call the heartbeat of the VU is the music, man. I love the music, man. Can we give it up for the band tonight pulling out a throwback? Surely, goodness, Joel, where you at tonight? He came out of retirement just for... Did you curse on some of the parts of that song? Like, like, shipping up another lot of mercy. Like, I, I didn't know what was going on or something. You, was, that, was that spiritual, what you said? Was, was that tongues? I'm just, okay, I'm, I'm just making sure. Making sure it's clean. Making sure it's clean. Um, but, man, we, we wouldn't have the worship that we have if it wasn't uh, for our awesome worship pastor, Pastor Zach. Um, worship's your heart, bro. Tell me, tell me some of the things that you've really, because a lot of people, you know, they see, they see you guys up here performing and singing the songs, but they don't really understand what, what's going on in the background, what you guys are doing, uh, what your vision is for the music ministry. Why don't you kind of talk to them about that for a little bit? Well, we love you guys. I just want to say really first, because honestly, um, anything that we're doing is, again, we're not performing, but it's a collective thing. It's, it's us worshiping God, but you guys are doing it at the same time. And that's what brings the presence of the living God into the room. And so we want to just say we love you from the team. We really do love you guys. You guys, it really is honestly, Tuesday night is, is a time for us to kind of unload because it is, I don't want to say easy, but you guys worship. So we don't really have to do much to get you guys to go. We're, we're, we're just doing it together, and it's a really good thing. But back in January, uh, Joe and I were talking, and, you know, it's always been our heart to, to create in this house and to write music and, and to give our best to God. And so we, after New Year's happened, we had written a song uh, last year, I think it was in December or November, December, and uh, we were like, man, like, I, I, we really want to do this thing live. We want to we record it. I don't know how. And uh, Joe was just so gracious enough to say, hey, man, let's just do it on Tuesday night. And so, you know, we rigged it up for, for the mics and the ceiling and everything, and we just recorded our single, Nothing Higher. And, you know, we, we sing that a lot. And that's kind of been... And, and, you know, we've talked about this has been a season where, you know, seasons change. There's good, bad, up and down all over the place. And that came out of just, man, God, what we don't know what's happening at this moment. But what we're going to believe is that every wall, every mountain, every obstacle is going to come down in Jesus name. And so that's where that song came up. Um, but last week, if you guys didn't know it, those who weren't here, our whole entire worship set last week was all of our music. So all four songs that we sang last week were songs that were written here in the house and so obviously, as, as things progress, we want to put out an EP, we want to put out a full album, and you guys don't know it, but this room, again, is rigged to, for live recording at all times, and so you didn't know it, but it's, there's mics in the ceiling right now, there's four on each side, and so every time you guys sing, whatever you guys do, any song that we've done that we recorded, your voices are all on it all the time, and so again, I encourage you guys, when we're doing stuff in here, worship, because you, you just don't know that last album that we put out live, it was the heartbeat and the sound of our church. It was the it was the it was the cry to God from our church, from our people. It wasn't us. It was everybody as a collective group. And so, honestly, the vision is because again, this is one of the greatest atmospheres to to sing music, to play music, to record music, and this is what we want to do. And so, that hopefully, the next time we get to do this is that we're going to record this for EP live in this room again. Uh, God willing, I believe it's going to be on a Tuesday night because again, it's just the best. But we just believe again, like we've had so many nights that I could say that, honestly, just for turning points in people's lives. But in my life, like, I've learned how to worship God in a, in a new way, in a bigger way, in a, in a broader way. I've seen God move. And every time I'm like, man, man, I've seen it all. Because I've been in church for all my life. Man, I've seen it all. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing new is going to happen. But then on a Tuesday night, the altars are filled. People are crying. He's talking about the night that we had with all the shootings. Like, it, this is just a place where if you have an issue, you have a problem, you have a need, there's something going on in your life, this is the place where you don't have to be ashamed, you don't have to be worried, you don't have to be afraid. You can come to the altar, you can cry, you can say what, you can do what you need to do to get it all out because God's here in this building and I really believe that. And so as a church and as a ministry, we believe that worship, it breaks chains. That's where miracles happen. It's when the presence of God is in the building. And so that's what we believe and that's what we're going to continue to do is write music that is breaking chains, that is healing people, that we want to believe that people get restored while we're singing the songs that we're singing. So we love y'all. We really do. We really it's great. Do. Excited, man, about the future and what is to come, and I'm just so proud of what you guys 
are growing into, man. And I'm just, once again, it's awesome to sit back and watch. I'm, I'm looking over there and like all that team is pretty much new for the most part. As I look back, we got a couple of veterans back there. Junior, you're about as old as me, praise God. <laughs> I'm not the only one and much better looking, but man, we got some new guys back there, Andler, Frankie, and uh, Shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. Could you give it up for the, the greatest drummer on the planet? All the team out there, man, we love you guys. You're amazing. Thank you for your service to the house. Um, one other thing I, I really want to want to hit up is is identity. I feel like I feel like young adults have an issue with identity. A lot of us are trying to figure out who we are and uh, what we are and what we're here for. And I love this new series that we talked about. This is us because I feel like we're declaring who we are. We are we are children of God. We're 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 separating ourselves from the pack and and. Holly and Joe, this is both your vision, but Holly, I want you to kind of really speak on this, this new vision for a second. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for a lot of you, you know, you come in here and um, the different Tuesday nights, there's just like a, a different, we call them series, you know, what we're talking about, kind of what we're framing the word of God around a thought or idea. And um, I want you all to know that those series aren't just put together because we have to. Those are thought out prayed over and we really seek God to figure out God what do you want us to say to this generation what do you how do you want us to convey the word of God and so kind of when I was talking with Joe about this is us um, I, I just as we're looking at the word rendezvous the last two letters of the rendezvous are us us and I thought the rendezvous is a group of people that are set apart that love Jesus. And I think when it comes to young people, we're always looking at outer sources. We're looking at the world to, to figure out who we are, right? We're in this season right now where it's we have people who are 18 to 35 and older coming to the rendezvous, and it's a season of growing into who you are. And so I really believe that the rendezvous has always been a place where we don't declare who we are by the world's standards, but we declare who we are by God's standards. That is us. And so I, I actually wrote to you some um, thoughts. This came to me actually during a worship set several months ago um, during the summertime when Zach and the team were actually worshiping to one of their songs. And I wish I could remember what song it was, but I just started typing kind of as I was writing. And this is, um, I share this with some of our core leaders, but this is us, a generation not bowing down to the world's expectation, a generation not willing to sacrifice the grace of God for the riches and fame, a generation that stands for the truth is a voice for the weak a strong foundation for those in need. This is us. Standing together in unified diversity, holding hands in covenant friendship, not giving up on the dream and promises laid out before us, given to us before time. We are fearless warriors in a victorious battle, unwilling to stop at any cost. Our heart is to see revival, to see the painful become painless, to see the hurting become healed, to see the far gone, the far gone brought near. This is us, selflessly willing to lay down our lives for others, recklessly in love with Jesus, and lavishly throwing the gospel message into every area of culture. This is us. So I really felt, like, I mean, I can honestly say like that was a prophetic word for this group of young people and even those that if you're brand new tonight, you're a part of this. You are us. And I just really believe in, um, you know, yeah, you can call this a series, but really this is a campaign for the fall. That this is us. We're going to declare to the world who we are as followers of Jesus. And let's see this city flipped upside down for the gospel. Amen. That's amazing. Wow. Um, you shared, you definitely shared a lot of heart and cast a lot of vision, but Joe, I want to, I want to end on you, man. Uh, you've been shepherding this thing for the past year. And I, I just think it's very important for all the folks out there to really just hear your heart on what you felt about this past year and where you, where you see us going for the Bible says a lack of vision, people perish and this house never lacks vision. I can tell you that. So man, I, I think they need to hear from you about where, where this thing's going. Yeah, and what I love um, so much about the rendezvous is, and really where 
this idea of us and, and this is us all comes from is that it, it the rendezvous, it, it transcends myself, Zach, Terrence, you know, this, this group of people that, you know, lead in some other areas. It, it transcends us and, you know, just solely us. And it really is um, all of us. And it is the people that make up the church. We, you hear people say that all the time. The church isn't a building. The church is people. And that's what I think is so beautiful when you look out um, in this crowd and you see um, people from all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities, all different social classes, and um, we get to gather together. And I think it's such a, a beautiful picture of, of heaven. You know, I, I hear people like people ask me, it's like, Joe, you know, you, you got your de- degree in, you know, Bible and, and theology. Like, what do you think heaven's going to be like? You know, like the, the streets of gold and like the seas of, you know, glass or pearly gates. And, and you know, I, I honestly, I'm like, yo, I don't know. I think heaven's going to be better than anything I could conceptualize in my little brain. Um, but if I were to guess, if you were to look at the book of Revelation, you, it talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. It talks about this big banquet, this big party, where all the nations gather together. They sit down, they share a meal. They're, they're together as one. And uh, so I think when I look at these moments, I think Zach was hitting it right on the head, and we gather together in worship. Uh, there is no more them. There's no more um, they. There is just us. And um, what I really love is then you see it in the things that we're really start, starting to stress or continuing to stress and meetups m28 is that um, we take this gathering on tuesday nights and we bring it out into every aspect of our lives i really i really think that um, ch- church or christianity or faith um, it does not need to get relegated or just sectioned off to like Tuesday nights or Sunday mornings when you have like when you're spiritual and then you go out into the world and then you just go about your business I really think the gospel and when you're led by the spirit it should permeate every conversation uh, every business decision every financial decision it should it should dictate what you eat what you put into your body it should dictate who you who you date who you marry it should it shouldn't just be about where you spend your time from 9 a.m. to 11:30 a.m. on a Sunday morning or from 7:30 or to nine o'clock on a Tuesday evening. My hope is that you would take this that, uh, and it would permeate every, every as- aspect, every facet of your life. It would compel you to want to go out into the streets and, and minister to people. It would compel you to want to get out of your comfort zone, to get off Twitter, to get off Instagram, and go spend some time in community with some people that want to encourage you, that want to pray with you. And one of my, um, one of my favorite quotes, uh, Dr. King. Um, he, he, he's got a, a tons of famous speeches, and one of them that is, is often quoted is, is the speech he gives on uh, the Vietnam War, where he talks about his, his opposition to the Vietnam War. And he gives this whole, he's given this explanation of why he's um, opposed to it. And, um, and one of the things he says that has been so um, formative for my life uh, is he says, I, I've determined to take the gospel seriously. And when I look at these people, when I look at Nelson, when I look at Zach, when I look at Amber, when I look at Holly, Terrence, Pastor Robin, Pastor Linda, Pat, Crystal, Darnell, I look at all these people here. Um, I, I, I look at you guys and I say, man, they have, they have determined to take the gospel seriously. I, Pastor Marcus was sharing an incredible testimony with our team this morning about coming down from New York and not knowing where they were going to end up, how they were going to pay the bills, but taking a step of faith. And I, I, I hear him say that story and I say, man, he... He is determined in his, in his heart to take the gospel seriously. The, the, the power of God, the, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the grave, it lives in us. And, and uh, I think that's, um, that's what I want to be said about me at the, the end of my life. Um, that's what I really, I desire for each one of us is that we would take the gospel seriously, that we would, we would get that it is so rich. It is so much more than just uh, not going to hell when you die. It is so much more about living life eternal here and now, experiencing heaven on earth now, living in abundance now, living filled with the Holy Ghost now, so that, as Tozer says, when you get to heaven, uh, it won't be all that different. You'll, you'll get there and say, I, I've been living by the Spirit. This this looks a little bit better, but I've been living so in touch with God that everything had new color, had new shape, had new smells. And so that's my desire for us. I think that's nothing, we're, we're, not, we're not changing the service times, we're not changing, uh, we're not painting the stage, you know, like magenta, like uh, we're going to keep rocking. I think it's been a pretty, it's been working pretty good for nine years. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Um, but my heart and really our heart, and this is really something that it's just great how God brings people together, is that uh, we, would, we would, as a people, as a group of people like Holly shared in that beautiful, really, I believe, prophetic word, um, that we would determine to take the gospel seriously. That it would, it would influence the way you think, the way you act, the way you live your life in, in such a rich and full, abundant way um, that at the end of your life, you'll have a legacy, a heritage a, 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 of faith that people, your, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will be able to say, you know, granddad, grandma, she, she took the gospel seriously, and that has made all the difference. And so um, I really think tonight, you know, this has been a fun night, um, but before we go and there's food out in the lobby, we're going to dance, we're going to sing, we're going to have a great night. But I really think, uh, T, that, that life is all about moments. We sang that, Julie, hey, can you put your hands together for Julie, uh, who sang that amazing, amazing <laughs> tribute to really everything that's happened here. Um, I think that life is all about moments. And the only, all you have in life is this right now. This is, this is, you should feel so alive. This is all we have. And um, I think we'd be remiss to, to move past this moment and assume that everyone um, is on the same page, is living full, full of the Holy Ghost, is living following Jesus. And so um, before, can we put our hands together? I want let, to let you guys kind of make your way. Can we put our hands together for Zach and Amber and Nelson and Holly and Terrence? And... Um, I think life really is so much about moments and it's about the people that you spend those moments with. And that's why this community is so special. That's why I hope you never take it for granted. Um, if this isn't your church home uh, and you maybe come here on Tuesday nights, that's great. I think that's amazing. I want to encourage you though, get plugged in to a church, be a part of a community. And I think in our technological generation, it's so easy to be like, oh, that's my online church and that's my church for my podcast and that's my church where I go to get the worship. and. I think that's great and all. I, th- I want to encourage you to in- incorporate all those things in your life to grow spiritually. But I want to encourage you, be planted. The Bible says those who are planted in the house will flourish. And and I want to, like I said, I, I want to make sure that in this moment, because you could walk out of here, like Nelson said, his dear friend Pete was with him, handing out burgers, handing out water. And hours, minutes later, his life was gone. The Bible says that our life is... It's but a vapor. Here one minute, gone the next. And I really want to give space right now to give this moment for you to say, if you're here, you say, tonight, tonight I want it to be a moment in my life. And what I love about God is we didn't, we didn't preach a message. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't create this beautiful illustration, but I love the presence of God because the Spirit of God can convict any heart, can speak to you. You can be seeing these things, be hearing what people are talking about, say, man, I want to live with that purpose, whatever that person's got, I want. And let me tell you, what, what we have tonight isn't charisma, it, it sure isn't good looks, it, it's the power of God that we've accessed by God's free grace and faith in that grace by the grace of his son, Jesus Christ. And so all across this place, I just wanna ask you this question. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I wanna give you this moment. This is all we have. You're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised an hour from now. You have this moment to make the most of it, to give God all you have, not just your heart, but your whole life. Tonight, I just wonder if you would say, maybe for the first time, or maybe, for the hundred and first time. You said tonight, I want it to be a moment in my life that I look at and say, it was on a random Tuesday night when we were celebrating and we were dancing and we were singing that I decided, you know what? I, didn't, I don't need a preacher to convince me into it. I don't need eloquent speech because I, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit tugging on my heart and say, son, daughter, I have so much more from you. If you just take this moment, turn from your own ways, turn from your own strength and rely on me. All across this place, if you say, I want to start tonight living fully alive, living by the power of the Holy Spirit, living in the free grace of Christ Jesus. You're done living according to your ways, according to sin, but you want to live in grace. You want to live in salvation. If that's you tonight, I just ask you to be so bold. Just raise your hands just so I know who I'm praying for. If tonight.